Welcome, and you are now watching the October showing of the Cannon County Chamber Connection. And we're glad to have you with us today. And of course, as always, it's brought to you by DTC Communications. And um, you know, if you listen real close, we may tell you something that you didn't know today. We hope we tell you something you didn't know anyway. My name is Carolyn Motley, and my co-host is Keith Reddy. And we're gonna do a little recap here uh, to make you feel bad if you didn't attend the Colorful Car Show, which was last weekend. We had beautiful weather. Uh, it was an outstanding event. We had more cars than we actually had room for, but that was okay. We gave out 70 trophies, six cash awards. Uh, DTC presented a 42-inch TV. I always want to say color TV, and I don't know why, because they don't make black and white anymore, so what else would there be but a color TV? <laughs> Well, now we have to go retro and start making black and white TVs, just because Carolyn said, you know. Well, you know, you always say that, well, they're going to give away a color TV. Yeah, and I, I do. thought, well, they don't, they don't give, they don't have black and white. So That's true. It's okay, but it was good. We had a 50-50 drawing. Uh, the man that won that was real happy. Um, we want to thank all of our sponsors that, because it does take a village to put that show on. But we want to thank all of our sponsors for that, along with the participants, because we had a lot of people from a lot of different areas that came to view that. Um, our final cruise in, and you probably won't see this till it's over, but it will be this Saturday at uh, on the square from three to six, and that will be our final cruise in for this year for the, that the chamber sponsors and we start up again next year, probably about April, depending on the weather with the cruise ends again, and those will go once a month. But um, the, car, the car, the toy drive cruise in is just what it is. We give toys to children that are connected with the Child Advocacy Center or uh, our domestic violence program at Christmas time, and that's where these toys go. So if you come to the cruise in, if you would bring a toy, we would deeply appreciate it. And that will be Saturday, October 9th, three to six on the square. We have several things on Saturday that we're gonna tell you about, but it will probably be over before this gets put on the air. So we do have some guests with us today. And the first one I'm going to talk to is Dwayne Tucker. And he is with Beans Diesel. And that is home of the blackout in the country. And for you diesel fans, I'm sure that you probably know of this, or you've been there before, or you'd like to go there. But it's going to be Saturday, October 16th. And Dwayne, you want to tell us a little bit about this event? Sure. Uh, it's for diesel enthusiasts, that's for sure. And uh, we're obviously located right here in Woodbury, Tennessee, and we're very proud of that. I uh, want to thank the people that have been kind enough to help us with the event. And this is actually our 16th annual. Uh, so we're excited about that. Uh, have a few things going on there. We have sled pulling. Uh, we have dirt racing, uh, burnout competition. Uh, dyno competition, and then uh, we have our show and shine for those who just want to make their truck look pretty. Uh, we have a contest for that as well. So that's the events. We start at 8 o'clock in the morning, and we'll probably run up to 11, 11.30 at night. And you can just, do you buy tickets ahead of time, or when you get there, or how do you? We're going to be selling the armbands uh, at the gate. Uh, so if you have to leave, then you Come will back. have an armband. Uh, but if you don't have an armband, then you will have to purchase one. So uh, we will have parking available and, uh, like I said, armbands at the gate. And there are a lot of diesel people out there. I live with one. Um, my sons are all. My neighbors <laughs> are all diesel people. So, you know, they're out there. So if you enjoy that or the sled pulling type things or the races, what do you race? 
Uh, they're racing trucks. Oh, okay. Uh, we have just one competition that's for tractors, but the rest of it's for trucks. Okay. Uh, and there'll be, on average, we have between three and 4,000 people that show up. So it's quite quite an event, and uh, we're, we're glad to be, uh, be a well, part I've of it. I've heard about it all these years. Yep. I just never did really, I knew it had to do with diesels. But I'm thinking more of a tractor pull situation. But it's very, very similar. But it is trucks, and that's because we sell truck uh, high performance diesel truck parts. So that goes hand in hand with what we do, and we ship those parts all over the United States and Canada. Okay, parts like what? Uh, valve covers, uh, plenums. Uh, we sell front covers, which covers your shine. Anything, anything that goes on the outside of the motor to make it shiny and pretty. That's what we sell. Oh, all right. Yep. Uh, nothing on the interior of the motor, but just the stuff that makes it look good. We call it bling. There you go. I call it bling, too. <laughs> <laughs> and I like bling. I like all that chrome and everything. I, that's good with me. Uh, now, you have this um, once a year, and usually, I know it's usually in the fall. It's always the second weekend in October. Uh, one of the companies that's a distributor for us, Rudy's, as there's the first weekend in October, so as not to interfere with them. Yeah, you know, we have ours the second, and they'll actually be here this year. They're, they're setting up a booth at our event, so okay. we're, we're looking forward to having them. Well, that was going to be my next question. Do you take vendors? A absolutely. Uh, try to use people that work with us. Uh, obviously, that's a good fit. Uh, I have dealers that I set up throughout the year that want to sell our parts. And uh, so I, I give them an opportunity to set up as well. So this year we've got 15 vendors. I want to say thank you to all of them for participating. And then we'll have food as well. I've got uh, five food vendors set up. Uh, okay. Try, try to start right here in Woodbury. And uh, DJ's. Well, that's a good thing. DJ's will be a part of that. Uh, Biggins is local here. Uh, Slick Pig out of Murfreesboro. So uh, try, try to keep people close by. Right. Well, for the car show, we do the same thing. I mean, it's the chamber. And Sophia's set up for our car show. And of course, they're right there on the square, right around the corner, have great food. And she comes over there, and they set up a booth and take orders, go back and fix it and bring it back. And it works out really good. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. I even have a taco truck, so we'll have a little bit of everything. <laughs> but, a, but a lot of barbecue, that's for sure. <laughs> I think that goes with diesels, I'm not sure. <laughs> So one thing we do want to mention is, where is Beans Diesel? Where is this taking place at? The, the actual physical address is 210 Rolling Coal Lane. Uh, actually, you can see our building from John Bragg Highway. If uh, you're heading out of town toward Murfreesboro, look down, there's a building that sits kind of down in a little hole right there. It's got a track behind it. That's, that's our building. But again, the address is 210 Rolling Coal Lane. And you get to that off of the old Murfreesboro Highway, right? That, that's correct. Right. Yep. Or if so. you're driving an off, uh, off-road vehicle, you can get well, to it off of John Burke Highway. Just <laughs> <laughs> you might end up, well, I don't know if I'd advise that or not. <laughs> might end up on my front page of my news. Just That's the right. right? <laughs> That's right. Well, Dwayne, I'm, you're, I think this is great, and I think this is great. There's a lot of enthusiasm uh, for cars, trucks, anything like that, horses. <laughs> any of that. I do remember going uh, to a Mopar show. I believe it was in Iowa or Ohio or somewhere. And uh, they had the burnout. And of course, they had a 72 uh, duster there. And he had his family in the car. <laughs> and they did a burnout. And I was sitting there watching it. And he blew his engine. And I thought, that's not real smart. You <laughs> smoked up your tires, burnt your tires up, and blew your engine. And then at the end of the show, they were asking people to give donations to buy him a new engine. <laughs> and I thought, uh-uh. <laughs> that's, that's common. Uh, with our dyno machine, people get on there to see how many horsepower they can actually turn. And, uh, 
It's very common to blow a motor. Oh my gosh. Uh, we we had one earlier this year, it was turning 3,000 RPMs and he blew his motor. So I'm it, sure. does, it does happen. He probably blew it all over the parking lot. <laughs> oh, this it, guy just. It, it, was, it went everywhere. We'll just put it that way. <laughs> I figured this much. See what you're missing. If you like to see motors blown up, this is a place to go. Well, Dwayne, you're welcome to stay for the rest of the show. Um, you can jump in at any time and say whatever you want to, but if not, and you have to get back, we appreciate you coming on, and okay. we hope you'll be a bigger part of the chamber. Look forward to it. I do have to get on. back to work, but okay. I appreciate your time, and uh, I look forward to everybody come out and see us. We look That's forward to right. having as many people as possible. That's right. Thank you. This is a good thing. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Well, Keith. Have you had any complaints over the car show? And if you have, don't tell me. Not, not a one. I've had a lot of compliments, though. <laughs> oh, well, sure. this is good. I want to hear those. I yeah. just don't want to hear the bad part. <laughs> a lot of compliments. Good compliments. All right. Well, I have two. Um, of course, the man, the one man that talked to me about it, he, he won. So, yeah, he was real happy over it. <laughs> he, he thought it was the greatest show he'd ever been to, and that's what we like to hear. All right, my next guest is Bill McQuarrie, and um, I want to tell you, Bill stays uh, busy. He is a Lions Club member, and of course, I'm a Lions Club member, so the things we're going to talk about right now are mostly all things Lions Club because I don't know if people really realize how active the Lions Club is in our community and how many things that they raise money to contribute to. Is that right, Bill? That is very true. Uh, of course, we're having the uh, white cane is no longer we're going to be able to set up a roadblock. And I know this is a little, it'll probably be announced, uh, be a little late for the, the viewers to understand because we're having a fish fry this Saturday and it's due to the white cane being unable to set up roadblocks and collect as we used to. Uh, we're hoping that we can have a big turnout and all of that is going to be passed through money for our Lions Club white cane. Right, that's, that's one of the biggest charities probably and kind of what the Lions Club was founded on was white cane. Exactly. And that takes care of site problems. Yeah. And of course, we still do screenings uh, in Cannon County and all the schools. And you'd be surprised how many children that we have caught eye problems with that were quite serious because of these screenings that have been able to go to doctors and be uh, be helped with those. I know of several people that had children. And of course, it uh, provides for leader dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, we also help with the Tennessee School of Blind. Right. So. They've come to our Christmas party on several occasions and say, right. they're amazing. They really are. It is. Uh, but uh, you have another fish fry. Now this one, the proceeds will, will benefit white cane but you have another one that people can be aware of, and that's gonna be when? November the 6th, and it's for CASA. And of course, CASA is a, is a court-appointed special advocates, and we use volunteers, and it is uh, the uh, qualified volunteers that advocate for the best interests of our abused and the neglected children in Cannon County. And these go into the home even if the foster children care. are put into foster care, yeah. these people go in and talk to the children that are in foster care to make sure that everything, they're being treated properly and there's no problems there because sometimes there is, even when you put them in foster care. So, and of course, CASA is all volunteers along with so many other areas in Cannon County. Uh, we had Tim Bell at our last Lions Club meeting, and he is with Life Flight for Vanderbilt, also um, the rescue squad. And of course, those are volunteers. I don't mm -hmm. think he volunteers 
for life flight, but I mean the rescue squad, our rescue squad, which is at every fire, accident, or whatever, are volunteers. Mm -hmm. The Lions Club, these people that work in all these things are volunteers. No one gets paid. These, this money comes through the Lions Club, goes in to the different charities that they, that they benefit. So, um, what day is that one on a Saturday? That's a Saturday, November the 6th, and we're hoping that we can have uh, the, the fish fry is going to be $12 for adults and $6, six for kids, children, and it's all you can eat. So. And you also have chicken, won't you? We're going to have chicken, fish, <laughs> white beans, uh, hush puppies, uh, coleslaw, coleslaw french fries. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so we should have a and some dessert. So all right, I need to go home and get busy. I need to fix some of that yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> I got. I still got time. Um, some of the other events. <coughs> excuse me. Mm -hmm. That um, the Lions Club is um, active in, and one of them is coming up. Uh, on uh, October 23rd and for last year this spring and last year we always had the Princess Ball which is a father-daughter dance and we had to postpone those due to COVID well this year we decided to try it in the fall so we're having a Princess uh, Masquerade Ball now before all the fathers and everybody gets excited about having to wear a costume, that is optional. And it's the same way for the girls. If you want to wear a costume, that's fine. If you want to dress up as a princess, if you want to just wear dressy clothes, that's fine too. Or if you want to wear, like I say, if you want to wear a costume. And you know, a lot of people get really offended when you ask them to wear a mask. Well, this is a masquerade ball, so nobody, no one should be offended if they're asked to wear a mask. But anyway, it's a lot of fun. I love this event. Um, and this will be, I think this is our, oh my gosh, 13th annual masquerade ball. It'll be from 6 till 8.30 at the Senior Center. And... Um, Advanced tickets are $25 a couple, and then $10 for each additional girl. And the things you'll get to enjoy are food, dancing. There's gonna be some special activities this year. Um, so it's everybody has a good time. I don't think I've seen anybody that, some of them are a little more active than others. But the ones that surprise me the most at this is the grandpas and the dads because I have one father that's come every year since I've been doing this. He never leaves the dance floor. Sometimes I think his escort leaves and he's still out there on the dance floor. <laughs> and I love it. I think that's great. But um, this, the money that we raise from this goes to uh, to benefit Juvenile Diabetes in, uh, Research Center. And that's very important too because we have a lot of children with diabetes. And I have diabetes myself. And I can tell you that as a juvenile, it's difficult. And so they need all the help they can get. And if we could find a cure for that, that would be amazing. That's just like finding a cure for cancer. I think if you could find a cure for diabetes because for juveniles, it's really difficult for them. They have a, a hard road to hoe. So that's going to be on the 23rd. And of course you can go to the blackout in the country at Beans Diesel on the 16th and then come to the Princess Ball on the 23rd and also the art center right now is having honky-tonk angels and on the 23rd 
22nd and 23rd, they will have the ultimate oldies. And that is a group, that's the name of the group, and they will be singing songs from the 70s and the 80s. And that will be the 22nd and the 23rd. Now, some of the other things Alliance Club does is you will be gearing up for the food drive that we do the whole month of November, right? November and up to through January this year. Oh, yes. we're gonna, oh, you've extended yeah. it. Yeah, it's gonna be held that we're gonna be collecting at the dollar market as we've been in the past three years, I think this right. is like our third year. Uh, and we need to uh, thank all of the Dollar General employees and all that help in partnering with this. They do because they, they kind of encourage you and, to. Uh, this year we're going to be providing food. All food collected will be going to the Cannon County Food Bank. And we're also going to be collecting for the blessing boxes. Right. We have two blessing boxes that are set up right now, one at the Lions Club and one in Short Mountain. So we will be collecting food for that to hopefully uh, provide food throughout the year. To I, those I, I think a lot of people don't know what the blessing box is. And it's just what it says. It's a small box. One of them is outside of the Lions Club. And one of them, I think they're moving it to the Short Mountain Fire Department on Short Mountain. And what you do is you put non-perishable food in it and it's open to anybody that needs food. There'll be canned items, there'll be dried beans of different kinds, soups, canned meats uh, that you can put in there. But what we ask is the people that can afford it, if every now, every time you go to the grocery store, buy a couple of items to put in the blessing box. But the people who need it, you're welcome to go up there and get out what you need. Uh, there's no questions asked. It's unlocked. And like I say, if you, if you have a church group or something that would like to help replenish it, that would be fine too. But you need to put back in there so the next one can Great. get it. Uh, also, the nut sales is going to be starting in November, the holiday nut sales. And uh, pecans, walnuts, and cashews. That's right. And then we also have the uh, Christmas ornament. And I'm not sure if that goes into the building fund or if that goes to a charity. I'm not for sure on the. I'm not sure neither. I'd have I to find out. But even if it does, you've got to keep the building up, too. <laughs> yeah. Now, Christmas comes along. And oh my gosh, the Lions Club. That first Saturday in December, I just call that Lion's Day in Cannon County because they start out with pancakes with Santa and that sausage and pancakes and um, coffee or milk or whatever you want to drink. And then Santa will be there, and if you bring your children, uh, you can get your picture taken with Santa. And also the village will be set up now. <laughs> The Christmas Village is put up every year, but it's put up inside the Lions Club building. I've had calls from people wanting to know when they can come to the Christmas Village because they think it's an outside village. It isn't, but it's worth seeing anyway, but it is set up inside uh, the Lions Club building. so. On that day, especially the day of the parade, and then that evening, if, if we can get enough homes at this time, will be the tour of homes, and then the parade is at 12 o'clock. And our parade gets bigger every year. It sure does. I would have thought it would have been smaller last year, but it wasn't. No. It was it, big. It was very big, and uh, uh, this year, the pancake breakfast is gonna remain at $6 a ticket. Well, good. So that's this is good. You don't want to price yourself out. out of the business. Right. <laughs> and uh, then, like I say, the tour of homes is always a big thing. But uh, the last couple of years, it's been very difficult. And I understand this uh, about people opening their homes 
in a time of COVID. I understand that completely. So if it happens that we can't get enough homes, maybe between now and then we can come up with something that will be right there at the Lions Club. And I think it, uh, November the 15th is going to be the cutoff whether or not we're going to have enough for the tour homes. Right. So uh, the if other there's thing anybody out there in Cannon County that would like to put their home on the tour of homes, please give me a call at the chamber. I'll be glad to uh, explain it to you or talk to you about it. I did have two, but because of health reasons, they've had to back off. So, um, you know, if you feel safe enough that you can do that, give me a call and I'll be glad to explain it to you. Because there's a lot of people that want to go. If you decorate your home for Christmas and you want to share the way it looks, this is the event for you. So just let me know. And don't forget the coach for Cannon, which is coming up uh, when that November is in the November 12th, 12th and 13th. 13th. And this event is free. When we say coach for Cannon, that's exactly what it is. They don't, um, you can, if you have some coats that are gently used, let's put it that way, children's, men's, women's, take them to Sue Patrick's office on Leicester Street, and uh, she'll be glad to get them over to the Lions Club. This takes place at the Lions Club on both of those days. And you just come in, but if you have children or anyone, if you're coming to get a coat, please bring your children so you can try them on and get a right size. Because they will also be giving away socks, uh, hats, gloves, yes. anything Underwear, else that we can. <laughs> uh, the, they were mentioning gloves, of course, is we're needing uh, any, any warm. Right, if you'd like to buy a anything. package of socks exactly. and take by, you know, that would be great too. Um, every year we have to go out and purchase some in different sizes so that we'll have enough in the sizes for people to come and get. But these are this is free and this is something that the Lions Club does for the community. So if you it doesn't matter, there's no questions asked other than the fact that you live in Cannon County. You do have to live in Cannon County if you're gonna partake in this. But there's no questions asked about your income or anything else. These are, if you need a code, I don't care if you're rich or poor, come over there and we're gonna suit you. We're gonna fit you with one. Whether you want one or not, we're going to. <laughs> Keith, do you have anything you want to throw in here? Not for the Lions Club, but it looks like you guys got a busy couple of months. Very busy. Hey, we yes. stay busy. Year round, but we really do. I, it, I was, you but know, it seems like the fall and the winter is when it really, you know, you do your fundraising, you more you got events. your activities for sure out in the public. Yeah, that they can, and it kind of slows down between February and uh, April, yeah, and then it picks right back up after that. But you just take right a deep now, breath. it is very, very busy as far as all of the activities we've got going, and we're, we're going to need all of the help and volunteers during this time. and we're looking forward to, to making sure we make a difference this year again, as we've always done. And it's, uh, our, our community reaches out and provides the necessary food at the food banks. And we can't ask for a better community and know that no. we can continue to ensure, ensure that everyone you know, has the necessary foods during the holidays. And great volunteers. I mean, for yes. everything, yes. fire departments, CASA, uh, there's volunteers for the child advocacy, although that is a 501c3. Well, both of them are, but most of the people that work in them are volunteers. That's great. So, and then your fire departments, all your volunteer fire departments, your rescue squad, the Lions Club. Um, you know, another thing that we didn't talk about with that is the blood mobile because we always host the Red Cross Bloodmobile, and the Lions Club does, and 
there's a big need for blood right now. And I, I'm sure a lot of that has to do with COVID, but that's a perishable item. You know, you give blood, that only lasts so long, so <laughs> needs to be replenished. So when that comes around, you certainly, if you can give blood, then you certainly need to go down and check into that. I don't know, it'll probably make you feel better that you gave that. I'm just throwing that in there just in case you need a little motivation there. And then, like I say, the Art Center has Honky Tonk Angels uh, through October 16th. Friday and Saturday shows are 7.30, and the Sunday matinees are at 2 p.m. And then, of course, they'll have the Ultimate Oldies group, and that will be 70s and 80s music. So if you're into that, then you call the Art Center at 615 Five six three two seven eight seven, and they will be glad to help you out there. Um, October fifteenth, which is a Friday, the Voice of Courage, and this is a candlelight visual uh, presented by Save Domestic Violence, and it will include music, testimonials, food, and more at the community center, and it begins at five p.m. That's when the meal starts, so. Wednesday, October 20th is the grand opening for our newest bank, Homeland Community Bank, and it will be, it is located at 1528 John Bragg Highway. That's right past uh, the Art Center. And the ribbon cutting will be at 10 a.m. And you can sign up to, uh, possibly be the winner of a $250 cash prize. Saturday, October 23rd is the Princess Masquerade Ball. And you can call me at 615-563-2222 if you have any questions about that. Uh, that's, all, that's been in the past uh, a big deal because it is a father-daughter or a father figure dance and little girls are proud to show off their daddies or their uncles or their bigger brothers but you have to be over 18 to be an escort and then saturday october 23rd short mountain distillery is having their halloween party from six to midnight tickets include all activities and dinner and you can enjoy DJ music, fire dancers, a costume contest, and I'm sure they have other things planned too. Buy tickets on their Facebook, shortmountaindistillery.com or at the gate. And your tickets will include dinner. Friday and Saturday, November 19th and 20th, I, I told you we was gonna get into November, is the Cannon Country Christmas event. That takes place on the square, but we also have businesses that aren't on the square that get involved in that. Uh, Friday night, the businesses will stay open late. We will have Santa uh, on the square and also a live nativity scene. And last year, I believe that was the highlight of that event. Now on Saturday, in the evening, they will have a nighttime parade, business parade. So we're having a meeting on the 14th to try to figure out exactly what all is going on, but that is scheduled for the 19th and the 20th. You have anything else you can think of that we could do, Bill? <laughs> Not that we've got a full schedule here. <laughs> Well, a well, couple of things I want to mention. November well, the right. 13th, we're getting ready for the first annual, hope I said that right, first annual, Parent Resource Fair. It's going to happen on the square. It's uh, put together by the Child Advocacy Center along with uh, Canyon County Save Program, uh, some of the youth uh, organizations in Canyon County, and it's going to... Uh, uh, provide parents with resources uh, for any type of legal help or, any, you know, those that might be in need of uh, foster parenting, things on that nature. 
Uh, that's going to take place on the square, and I'm not for sure what time. I know it's going to be during the day. It's going to run concurrent along with the Veterans Day Parade, which is the same day, so there'll be plenty of people out in town, and uh, it'll be at the Courthouse Square, so people are invited to stop by and uh, join in on that. Also coming up uh, this next, uh, what is it? Let me go back to the 19th. On October the 19th, there's going to be a town hall meeting, Canyon County town hall meeting. Um, don't know if you've heard the news, but uh, there's been speculation that the community pool is going to be filled in. Well, there's a group of people saying, oh, hold up, let's talk about this and see what we want to do with the pool. So they're going to try to save the pool, so to speak, and they're inviting all the citizens to come out. And this will be at the courthouse um, at 5 o'clock on the uh, 19th and we want to invite everybody to come out and and speak their piece so to speak on the uh on the pool and learn you know a little bit about what's going on and what the what the costs are of, of filling in the pool i think that's you know, the that whole nature. issue is the cost of fixing it versus filling it in and then if you fix it getting somebody that can oversee it that's responsible enough to do that. And I also think a crowd, you know, getting people to come out and actually use the pool to the support. Yes, we're sitting out here saying we want to fix the pool, but, you know, in years past, you didn't have enough support to even afford the well, cost you've got of to overhead hire costs. Lifeguards, right. you know, there's a lot to that. You know, you've got to make sure it's drained and cleaned and there's, you gotta ha you gotta take care of what you have. I guess that's what I'm trying to say. <coughs> but that's interesting to know. I didn't know they were having that. Yeah, it was just uh, released, I guess, a couple of days ago. They had talked about it. They were looking for vendors and stuff. Well, as far as the the uh, town hall meeting was uh, discussed during the last commission meeting on Saturday. Oh, I yeah. thought you said they were looking for vendors. Oh, no, the, and resource, for <laughs> the resource fair wants vendors to come by and, okay. you know, people okay. that are interested in getting. Well, we've got tons of things going on. We've got businesses in town that you could visit and enjoy yourself. Lots of boutiques, lots of antique stores. They've got unique little coffee shop. We've got uh, several restaurants on the square and right off of the square. So, um, yeah, if you want to take a day and just shop around, come to Woodbury. They'll be glad to have you down here. Glad to see you've got Joe's Antiques and uh, Willow 21 and the old feed store antique mall. Uh, you've got Lens, you've got another one and I can't tell you what the name of that is. And then there's a little kid's shop right on the corner. Right so next to um, the paper. Yep. yep. And then we've got a boutique that's moved in next to the paper, too. Right, right. Couple of, yeah, couple we have. of different things. So, you know, there's no reason why you can't come in and enjoy yourself. Some of them do require masks. Some of them don't. But if they do... You know, I've always said this thing with everybody getting so upset about the mask thing is, if you don't want to wear a mask and you're that set on not wearing it, then just don't go in there. But if they say that we feel better with you wearing a mask, put your mask on and shut up. I thought this is silly that there's so much controversy over wearing a mask. So, you know, not all of our businesses require some. Some do. But if you want to go in that business and put a mask on, or don't go in. Simple as that. There's no need throwing a fit over it. That's kind of silly. If you were ever part of changing the subject a little bit, just to okay. get a little bit more humorous here. All right. If you were ever a part of our radio shows, when me and Carolyn would get on the radio, there was always a little corner every now and then when we'd find, a, you know, some time. We'd talk a little bit about one of Karen, uh, Carolyn's phobias, 
It's called snakes. Oh, well. Wow. Carolyn loves Canyon County, and she, you know, <laughs> the one thing that Carolyn doesn't really do is go out of Canyon County much, you know, that, <laughs> at least that we hear. But now we're going to know, I, I wanted to pass this along in case Carolyn ever had any uh, want to, and I'm sure the Arnold Air Force Base is thanking me for this, but hey, you sent me the press release, so we got to read it. Um, the Arnold Air Force Base just released a press release, if I can pull it up here. They are home to more than how many snake species, would you think? Oh, I don't care. 20. Don't That's so like Carolyn Australia. Will never, <laughs> don't invite Carolyn to go out to the Arnold Air Force Base. I've gone she, by there. <laughs> yeah, she will never go there again. But uh, 21 species, according to this press release, of uh, snakes are known to reside, reside at Arnold Air Force. They don't, it's not like a guest, you know, appearance. <laughs> they reside there at the Arnold Air Force Base. So we thought we'd pass that along. And uh, I, Well, I'm glad to know that. Like I say, I passed by there several times, but I've never You're not stopped. Gonna stop and now, now I know I'm not. <laughs> um, you know, that's even hard for me to go into parks or hiking or anything like that. And then one time I was on a pontoon boat and we're going down the lake and it was beautiful. And here comes the snake swimming across, and I thought, great. You can't. <laughs> They're everywhere. <laughs> well, I don't know. I've never <laughs> ran across a snake at a park, you know, and I've been to plenty of parks. Well, you you're know, just not in the right place. All that good stuff. Huh? I still haven't gotten over the guy that caught the alligator in the garbage can. Did y'all see that? No, I did not. Uh -uh. It was in oh, Florida. Oh, yes. It was not too long ago. Yeah, it's just yeah, last, last week, week I yeah. seen it. And he, somewhere in Florida, where he lived and there was this alligator and it was a good sized alligator. So he takes the garbage can with a lid out there and kind of teases it till he gets it in the garbage can. Mm -hmm. And then he turns it up and closes the lid and takes it down to this, he must have lived by the water somewhere mm -hmm. and turns it loose. And I thought, that is some I don't want guts. to live anywhere where there's an alligator. And he had on sandals, too. <laughs> now, that takes some guts there because you never know. When the, the alligator, you would think, would shoot up out of that garbage can <laughs> oh, unless did. he had it secured down. It's it plastic. Didn't. It just had a, you know, it was one of those on rollers. And he just kept rolling it, and the alligator kept backing up, but finally got it in there and turned it up and flopped the lid down and... Wheeled him over there and I guess it must have been Gator Week last week because there was another video of a guy, of a guy that was had a drone and he was flying the drone over some water and all of a sudden unsuspecting didn't even know it all of a sudden out of nowhere this alligator came up and, and jumped at the, the drone and, and bit it <laughs> and it still that it didn't get all of it and everything the drone was able to escape good drone you know. But then they were able to fish the video off of it and see it in action. You know, so they got the video off of it and they were able to see how the alligator jumped. I mean, you would have probably jumped too. Oh, I would have too. Yeah. Bill, do you ever go to Florida on vacation? No, not much. Do you like the beach? Uh, only for a day or two. <laughs> Beth does not like the beach, so <laughs> after two days we read the Well, I love I love the beach, but yeah. I think about, you know, you get out there and you swim or play in the water that doesn't look real deep. Yeah. You know, there's some really big fish in the ocean that aren't too far from right. the shore. And I was watching this overhead. I don't know if it was a helicopter or what. And it was showing people on a beach in Florida they were out there splashing around and right, it didn't look like it was probably 10 feet away from them, mm -hmm. was a fish that was a lot bigger than most people. Really? A lot bigger than most people. Well, that leads us right back into our fish fry <laughs> come this Saturday and on November the 6th. So. You may find one of these. Yeah, that'll be perfect. <laughs> that you may is have to double perfect. charge for yeah, that Yeah, double right? charge. That's 
That's more you can, than you can eat. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. I had forgotten what all I was supposed to fix for this until Bill started talking, and mm -hmm. I thought, oh, I forgot the white beans. <laughs> I was oh, yeah. concentrating on the slaw, and then he mentioned um, desserts, and I thought, oh, shoot, I didn't think about that at all. Right. <laughs> so we won't be seeing Carolyn for the next couple of a couple of weeks because she's got to prepare for this. Well, I do yeah, have to prepare. Of, and then I have a cruise in starting at 3 o'clock, so. Yeah. But that one should be easy because I don't have to get up and do a whole lot for that. You are going to be there, aren't you? I have to be. Do I have to well, be? Well, yes, you have to be there. I wonder why. <laughs> Who's going to DJ? He's my DJ. <laughs> I've got a DJ of football thing earlier that day, youth football. Okay, how program. is our football team? We won we, one? We got to the, we're going to the playoffs. That's what I heard. And I uh, know this is going to be aired after the fact, but uh, we also uh, ended up with homecoming. This week is homecoming week, and we're playing Tennessee Heat, and that's a homeschool football program out of Nashville. Then we've got two more games left after that. We've got uh, a road trip to community school on the 20th. And then on the, is it the 20th? Let me see your calendar, make sure I'm correct. No, it's going to be the 22nd. No, 15th. 15th. 15th and the 22nd. 15th, uh, and that's going to be at Community School in Unionville. And then on the 29th, we close out. And if we can beat Community School, uh, we close out with the what would be known as the championship game on the 29th for the uh, region. And if we can win that, we get to host at least one playoff game. We win that one, we host another one in November. So for the first time since 2007, or 2009, 2009, we're in the playoffs, and that was right. as a result of beating Grundy County after we lost big to DeKalb County. But uh, DeKalb was not a region game, so we, didn't, we, did, we weren't bothered by that. Okay, well, I think we've talked about everything that's happening up to the end of the year. And you know, at that point, you kind of sit back, especially probably after the Christmas events uh, with the Lions Club, you kind of sit down and take a deep breath and then you start all over again because it's next year already. And this year has flown by. It's flown by a lot quicker than last year did, didn't it? It did. Yes. Seems like 2020 lasted five of years of what we're experiencing now, so. And we want to thank you for joining us, and we hope that you tune in next month, and we want you to have a happy Halloween and a safe Halloween.